ABC News contributor General Robert Abrams joins us now. He was former commander of U.S. forces in Korea. General Abrams, thank you so much for joining us. You were also senior military assistant to the former Secretary of Defense during the last invasion of Ukraine. Uh, right now, this centers on, on border unrest between Ukraine and Russia. How does a major conflict between Ukraine and Russia impact Americans here at home? Uh, Lindsay, first, it's good to be with you. I think what everybody needs to understand is that based on the size, the scope and capabilities of both the Russian and the Ukrainian forces that we're seeing, a major conflict will result in a level of violence that we have not seen in Europe for some time. Could be World War II, but in some time. The sheer destruction of infrastructure, homes, cities, loss of life, both military and civilian, as well as displaced civilians will directly impact not only Ukraine and Russia, but economically will certainly affect Europe and have global reach to include the United States. And that's why we all need to be paying attention to this. How could NATO and the United States respond as far as military involvement if there is a major conflict with Russia moving further into Ukraine? Yeah, look, I'm confident that the NATO Military Committee has been briefed extensively by the Supreme Allied Commander of Europe, General Todd Walters, who's also dual-hatted as our U.S. European Command, the UCOM Commander, which is a geographic combatant commander who reports directly to the Secretary of Defense. And I'm confident that Todd and his team have prepared and briefed a wide range of military options for these types of scenarios. Development of these different options for a variety of these scenarios, they've been in the works since Russia invaded Ukraine, annexed Crimea in February of 2014. So these are not newly baked options. These are refined options over many years, many commanders, uh, and a lot of uh, discussion between our NATO partners and the United States. Um, and the key here, uh, from a military perspective is providing a range of military options so that policymakers and elected officials can make fully informed decisions. So based on what I'm reading and what I'm seeing in the news, I think that U.S. and NATO will be looking for options to provide military support to Ukrainian operations. And military support comes in the form of you know, providing logistics, intelligence, potentially arms and ammunition, and maybe even continuing advising to Ukrainian forces. And General, you, of course, dealt with a similar situation years ago. What's the difference between what you saw back in 2014 and what we're seeing right now? Yeah, you know, a lot of people think that this is a replay, and uh, it's this is not a replay. So to, to go back in time, we have to understand, remember the context, um, February 2014, following the ouster of the pro-Russian president of Ukraine, uh, there was a short period of civil unrest. And with an, and also simultaneous to this was the uh, Winter Olympics in Sachko. And within a week of the end of the Olympics, Russian troops were able to achieve strategic, operational, and tactical surprise by suddenly, suddenly annexing Crimea and simultaneously conducting military operations to seize portions of Eastern Ukraine. And we all remember this, right? These operations were unattributed operations by quote, little green men, supported by heavy information and cyber operations intending to destabilize Ukraine. Um, in my, you know, my candid assessment, I think the world and we were all caught a little flat footed in 2014. So fast forward now to January of 2022, that conflict in eastern Ukraine, that's been at a stalemate now for a few years. And in the last few months, we've seen a massive buildup of Russian forces. As you as the introduction said, all three sides of Ukraine um, and direct threats to Ukrainian sovereignty. So there is, there is no longer any chance for strategic or operational surprise. And I think if the Russians do decide to do something, um, they're going to look for opportunities to achieve tactical surprise. So we're in a much, much different situation than we were in 2014. Sure, certainly not flat-footed at this point because this has been happening in slow motion for some time now. General Robert Abrams, we thank you so much for your time and insight. 
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.